As the world population continues to grow, destructive human activity continues to destroy the environment. Uganda, which enjoys a tropical climate, has rich and diverse flora, including a wide variety of tree species. In the early 90s, Uganda was said to have over 400 tree species, including some populations that are endangered, such as Afzelia africana. Uganda's current annual deforestation rate is estimated at 4%, one of the highest in the world. This is leading to a sharp decline in the quality of its tropical forest, particularly as certain tree species are threatened with extinction following exploitative and poorly regulated logging practices. I'm just an operator. I'm not a log dealer. But if you ask me to come and work for you, I just come and work. While many people make daily use of natural resources such as land, water, trees and minerals for survival, others are engaged in irresponsible actions that are not about survival but instead about greed and exploitation. Their actions are causing tremendous destruction of the environment. On 27th January 2019, we set out on a journey. We were looking for three women, all of them we had been told, are illegally logging Aphizelia africana, a high-value tree species. We were shocked by the confidence with which these ladies talked with us about their business, considering that it is illegal and that we could potentially expose them to the authorities. We were prompted to ask them what pushes them into such a dangerous business. business <laughs> We are currently witnessing the cutting down of already endangered tree species such as the Afzelia africana, also known as Bayo in Uganda. Afzelia africana is a tree species in the Fabesia family. It is found in the drier parts of most tropical African countries, including Uganda, in very specific parts of the West Nile and the Acholi subregion. The trees can grow up to 20 meters high and take on average 50 years to mature. Dealers in the trade are taking advantage of impoverished local populations facing immediate challenges like food, school fees, and other basic needs. Such dealers are paying very low amounts for a mature tree which they then go on to sell internationally at very high prices. It's all because of money. The owners of the trees want money. They need the money to educate their children and to cater for other livelihood needs, etc. The owners of this land sell a truck of logs at 3 million Uganda shillings. You buy the trees, you go cut them. It's up to you then to bring a crane and a tractor to drag the logs to the loading site. If you want to sell the logs at the loading site, you can get 9 million Uganda shillings. If you load the logs on a truck and take to Kampala, you are paid 8,000 US dollars on arrival. And you find that these community members, the host community members, some of them, they were not used to money. 
you know, giving someone 500,000 shillings, someone becomes so excited and they tell you, please, you cut the trees as well. So you find that someone can receive 500,000 shillings and then they fail more than 50 trees of Azuzeli Africana. This kind of business is often associated with men, but these ladies have taken over and are redefining gender roles. Rather than would-be husbands, they are the ones providing for their children's school fees, food, clothing, and medical care. Having suffered the wrath of the long LRA war, they say all the other available alternatives of getting income seemed not good enough to cater for their needs. When I was in school, the rebel killed my father. When I was in P5, 2002, then I start suffering. I was in Sina 3, then I get married. After getting married, I have two kids. The husband leaves me to get another marriage. Then I come back to my father's home. That is what I'm, I'm start doing the business for Chaco and dogs because I need some support. support. In discriminate cutting of trees, including red flagged species like Aphizelia africana, is already causing damage to the environment in terms of unreliable rainfall, changing weather patterns, drought, famine, strong winds, etc. We asked them if they were aware that what they are doing is negatively affecting the environment. But for us, we didn't educate the side of environment. We don't know. But mostly important of the, uh, me, myself, I don't know. I know only one, to keep our environment because of rain, yeah. No kwa kweli, hakuna mtu mwenye kuja kusema ati hizi miti iko mbaya ama wachana na hii. Hii iko mzuri mwachana na hii. Sasa hii hakuna hivyo mtu mwenye anakuja kuongea kwa sisi hapa. Hakuna wengine mwenye wanakuja hapa wanakuja direct tu. Kama maliza kukata patia pesa. Their response was brutally honest. When it comes to conservation issues, they say there are a double standards on the side of the law enforcement. Some law enforcers themselves are involved in the same business. The women argue that even those law enforcers who are engaged directly in logging are nonetheless so corrupt that people like themselves are left with no option but to continue. For example, they say that their goods are frequently impounded and sold by the same law enforcement officers. <laughs> Ana siku moja amekamata miti yangu. Amemaliza kumata miti yangu, anasema kwangu, "Mama, nani mesema kwako wewe waende kukata miti? Sitaki wewe kuingia kukata miti charo." Sasa mimi nauliza yeye, "Alafu bibi yako mimi nafanya na yeye? Hapana akata environment. Mimi ndio miti yangu mimi nimekata ndio environment." Amesema kama iko mdomo hivyo blogu yako hauwezi pata. Na logo yangu sijapata yeye amechukua ameuza Kampala, bibi yake ndio amechukua. Sasa mimi nimewacha na yeye. I cut bayo, the good one. They are taken. I lost 16 million two times. I loaded my logs. I risked in Bobby. They arrested me. They asked me, I give them three million. After giving that money, they tell my driver, you return, go back to district Gulu. They are offloading my, my logs. I lost all my money. Now I don't have money. Availability of a ready market is a factor that encourages people to stick with the trade of illegal logging. They argue that if government is determined to stop illegal logging, it should start by cutting off the market for logs. When government have not agreed Nobody can sell them. Should be there in the bush. It is like 300 years, 500 years. They are there. Nobody come and cut them. We keep them secret there in our forest. Those Indians, they are there. They don't pay tax. They pay tax. That's why they came. 
Now, when the, those Indians are there, for us, we are going to cut. The one who is remaining, we are going to cut because we get order from the government. We are in bush here, we don't know anything. When they are there, we are taking. Because we want money, yet we are, when I'm cutting my trees, I want to take it, you cut all my money. I come back with zero, I enter back again in the bush, the money I have. I use it for cutting. Because no way I can benefit. I, I can leave the business I'm in, yet I use all my capital. I lose all the capital. I live like that without get, getting my capital back to me. I going to pay the children with what? So I will work in this business. I cannot stop sincerely in the name of God. I should continue. Even forest officer come and arrest me, take me in the jail. When I pass out, I will go back. Because I want my money. This is the tree we have cut. And you like a forest environment officer. <laughs> this is our tree we have cut. <laughs> if we have a solution for us, mm. is you to know for us, we don't know. We just buy every day. Most of these trees here don't stay within Uganda. They have market in Saudi Arabia, in these um, Arab countries. So they're exported. And you find out a truckload of uh, Abzil Africano. It is 8,000 US dollars, which will equate to 28 million shillings. And of recent, I was told that it has gone beyond even that one. It's 30 million. This is a species that has already been declared endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. It is categorized as vulnerable on its red list of threatened species. In Uganda, Section 29, subsection 3 of the Uganda National Forestry and Tree Planting Act 2003 lists Afzalia africana among the reserved tree species. Nonetheless, logging continues unabated as the well-placed and corrupt officials supposed to enforce the laws are themselves allegedly benefiting from the illegal business. Enough, you know. These days, if you set off with your truck, law enforcement is always along the way. But the log dealers use money to pass. I often hear the transporters saying, I'm going to put aside 5 million Uganda shillings in their pocket for bribing. Hizo kulipa barabara peke yake. Yani na wanza hapa kwa polisi hapa. Unalipa hapa, anafika kwa zi wanaita akurukwe hapa. Iyo district ya muro naka hapo. Analipa, anafika la ibi gulu, analipa, anafika karuma, analipa, anapata wati ya NFA Kampala. Wanakimbia, wanakuja, e, hey, Bobby, wanalipa. Alafu wati ya NFA Kampala, wanakuja fazi ya kiradongo, analipa. Alafu hapo di anakwama, hapo kwa barabara, anapata tuma traffic. Traffic vile, kama mejua, mebeba lok. We nalipa, we mnyewe nalipa lok, siyo naangalia gari, analipa lok, mwenyiko kwa gari. Even our traditional leaders have been compromised. We used to give maximum respect to our traditional leaders because look at our land tenure the land belongs to the communities and the people who are charged with the duty to manage to give directive access and control of our land we have the clan leaders but they also wrote a letter and they also gave a go away that they don't want their people to remain in poverty this thing should continue so we find that everyone is compromised by the LCs, the traditional leaders. We have even people at the sub counties, the district, even the nation. We have all the people have been compromised. We are trying our best to stop these things, but we have got threatening ones. Like I, for one, have decided, and I even told my superiors, my supervisors, and my experts, I said, going to the field alone, I cannot. Because I've been threatened on several occasions, phone calls, they follow you up, they tell you are stopping our business, this is our future. It's the future of our children, so they're like, who are you to stop us? If measures to curb this illicit trade are not enforced, the entire species will be wiped out. This time round, we are tackling landowners and we are going to go for them and we are going to make sure the law catches up with them. There is no way you can say you're innocent and you've just rented out your land when you have not taken the responsibility to ensure that you monitor the activities on the land. If you read the NEMA law, section three of it, it will spell out your role and duty as a landowner or as a landlord. 
The effects of cutting down the trees have already negatively impacted on weather and rainfall patterns, feeding into wider processes of deforestation, environmental destruction, and climate change. The costs for Uganda in terms of loss of tourism, agricultural potential, and ultimately loss of a viable environment for its own citizens are enormous. If you go to Palaro, sub-county, you will just shed tears. The level of degradation is too high. The rain in that area is wanting. And the area, if left unattended to and unregulated, will soon degenerate to a desert. I think this causes damage to the environment as well as nature. This is a crime against humanity. Because in the next few years, we will see how people will suffer. In the next 10 or 15 years, we will have no rain. We will have starvation everywhere. We will have drought. And our communities will start dying of hunger just because we have failed to rescue the situation. <laughs>